We just went from this to this. So here's the deal. I like solar. Um, I'm no electrician, but I enjoy the idea of getting energy from the sun to use um, and just being less grid dependent. I'm in no wise expecting us to be able to be fully off grid, but I like to try and get solar things set up in places that we can and where we can afford it. If you've been with us very watching our videos very long, you, you've seen us install the little solar lights uh, for our barn. So that way we didn't have to um, run power all the way out here to the barn. So that was nice. Um, it was easy. It was just a simple thing off of Amazon. And we actually end up having two for the two different parts of the barn. But we're kind of outgrowing that. Um, things are just changing. And so I'm actually kind of diving in a little bit. Um, and I've got some bigger things that I'm going to try. And we're going to see how they go. So here's what I'm working with. Um, got a 200 watt solar panel, uh, just a single panel for now. Um, there again, I reiterate, I am not an electrician. I don't claim to know a ton about electricity. So, um, we're kind of learning as we go here. So I suspect with what we're going to be running, a uh, single panel is going to be no problem. Um, but we'll see. I always have the ability to expand if I need to. What that's going to be feeding is the, um, the Blue Eddy um, battery bank here. And I've got that. Um, the nice part about that is uh, there's no kind of inverter or anything that you need to get separate. So the panel can feed directly to the battery. And then from the battery, I've got um, some lights, one for each side again, um, that I can wire directly to a power plug that can directly plug into the battery. Now you may ask, well, how do you turn it on and off? Uh, this is probably going to be an experiment as well. Um, what I have is um, some smart home um, power outlets that I can turn on and off with um, either via scheduling or with um, over the internet. Now we don't have internet uh, very good coverage out at the barn. But the idea is I'll set the schedule um, and then it will turn on and off automatically based on the schedule we set um, we're with, without internet. Um, but there's also a button on the side. So when you go into the barn, if you need to turn it on, you push the button on the side of the, uh, the power outlet and it will turn that on. So um, we're going to see how that goes. I have a backup plan in my mind just in case that doesn't go very well, but that's what we're going to try. So if you didn't see when we put in the previous solar lights, um, you saw the solar panel outside on the outside of the barn. Um, here is the light um, itself. Uh, they're not super bright, especially on this goat side. It's not real big. Um, so the lights I have that I'm going to be putting in are going to cover this area better. It's probably going to be overkill for the chicken coop side, um, but we'll see how it goes. Um, the other weird uh, and maybe not weird, but the other um, slightly inconvenienced part about that, the lights that we have, um, they're remote. Um, so you obviously have to be able to turn them on and off this way. They have a timer setting. They were starting to kind of not work with that timer. Um, it'll, it'll turn off sometimes or it won't turn off and then it's running all night long, uh, which I don't think we've had a problem with it necessarily dying the battery and if it ran all night long. Not, but that's just not what we were wanting. We don't want the chickens to be trying to go to sleep and it's daylight um, for them. So the idea is we're gonna switch it out to this other system and try to regulate the timing of the turning on of lights for them a little bit better, more consistently. And then we actually uh, have a plan to repurpose these other ones. So uh, that'll probably come in a later video, but um, uh, at this point, I'm gonna probably start working on wiring first because um, I'm gonna have to run some wire for this. Um, since it's not just an all-inclusive kit, I've got to run some wire and from where we're going to put the battery and then to the actual light fixtures themselves. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to finish this all in one day, so we're probably going to have to clip this together 
Um, but Amanda's definitely been uh, patient with me. Uh, she probably would tell you that I waited and pushed off this project way too long. Um, I've had this stuff for a little while and uh, we've just been putting it off, putting it off and uh, we're getting down to it and we just need to get it done. So let's go. First order of business. We gotta get rid of these cobwebs. It is really bad in here. Maybe now we can work. <laughs> You're noisy, duck. <laughs> Well, I'm going to take this light down, but um, not fully disconnect it because it's actually a little helpful at the moment because it's getting darker in here. So let's see how this goes. <laughs> That's just dandy. Lost the screw. What? Okay. No, oh, and I used wire clips, nails. That's nice. Well, we might deal with that later. Did you lock lose Wire time. box here with the light with and we'll see how that goes. Wire to light. All right, and on this side is where the battery's gonna go. I built a little shelf over there. Battery's gonna go. I just gotta get my wire over from the chicken coop over here and put the end on and we'll be ready to go, I guess. Okay, 
well, that took longer than I'd hoped, but there again, I'm not an electrician. So, moment of truth time. And no, I did not test this before getting on video, so we'll see how this goes. Okay, battery's on. Power outlet's on. Let's see. Turn on the smart switch. One moment. I probably grabbed a smart switch that I hadn't configured yet, so yep, it's probably not gonna work. Let's just plug straight into the battery instead. Two hands. Oh. All right, now. Let's see if it works. We have light in the chicken coop. A lot of light. So there it is. And like I said, I probably just grabbed uh, one of those smart switches that hadn't been, smart outlets that hadn't been set up yet, so it was probably just waiting. Um, to be configured first. So get that taken care of and um, I guess this side will be done. All right, now it's time to put the MC4 connectors on the ends of my solar wires. Um, this is new to me. I did a lot of YouTube, a lot of uh, watching videos, a lot of um, reading, um, figuring out what the proper type of connector is for the certain situ situation you may have and whatnot. Um, specialty crimping tool, um, went ahead and got one of those. You probably can get by without it based on what I've seen, but um, everybody also highly recommends it to be done properly and not to have any problems in the future. So I'm gonna be putting those on and we'll see how it goes. Hopefully um, I'm able to do it right. This is, uh, there again, I'm not an electrician, and it is definitely new territory. So. Put the stripped wire in here into the connector. This one is getting the male connector. With this tool, you're supposed to just squeeze it down till it releases. Click. And there you go. Now that's crimped on all the way. Take the rest of the pieces of your connector. Slide it over. You take the tip of the connector, and you push it in until you hear it click. Click, clicks into place. Push the strain relief and waterproofer up in there, and you screw that on. Now it's got a nice waterproof seal, and this end's done. Tidy that up out of the way so the goats don't get it, because they're, uh, they've been pretty ornery through this. The same thing for the other end, the other wire we've got here. If I remember to uh, have Amanda add this in the video description, um, we'll put a link to a video that I used that was very helpful, very simple, easy to follow for doing these MC4 connectors. There 
we go. Now we got the negative side. And again, you take the rest, the tip of the negative, push it in until it clicks in, clicks into place, strain relief, and screw it together. Now, what that does on the other end of these two cables is the solar panel. We'll connect that up. Uh, once we get up on the roof, we'll connect that up to this. This is just an extension solar um, solar cable. And then for the the battery we're using, it came with this um, the connectors to the DC input for the the charging of the battery. So we'll get that installed and plug it into the battery. Once we have uh, that done, then we can connect up the solar panel on the other end and we should be good to go. All right, so we're up here uh, fastening the solar panel. Um, this particular solar panel at least did not come with uh, mounting brackets of any kind. Um, so um, we got a just a generic Amazon um, roof mount and it's, it's uh, tilt. Um, so right now we're just getting it attached. I put the, uh, the mounts on the roof. I managed to get it on the studs or the joists um, underneath the roof line. Um, I already put on the uh, the bracket pieces that go on the solar panel. So I'm just attaching it now and we'll get the other pieces. These are the legs. Um, you take these and you put them on the, the uprights on the solar panel and then you use the different mounting holes to adjust for the different height that you want. And that varies based on your um, your location for what's most ideal. I think um, where we are, it's about 33 degrees. Um, technically, it changes in the winter versus the summer, but I'm not going to get up here and change it every time. So I'm shooting for the kind of middle of the road, 33 degrees. That'll be good enough for all of our needs. Well, we got the solar panel mounted. Um, got the extension wire ran. Um, as I showed earlier, this is the cable that came with the battery. Um, so now, moment of truth. See if I did those connectors right. If I plug this in, it should start charging the battery. And there it goes. Looks like we're all set. It's got 12 watts of input right now. Um, it's kind of overcast, so I'm sure we'll kind of check on it, make sure everything seems good, but I think we're all set. We just went from this to this. So, finished up with all the barn solar and lighting changes that we had planned. I uh, went ahead and put uh, identical setups for the chicken side and the goat side. Um, just wired that all in to our battery that we have and the battery is getting fed directly by the one solar panel and it's looking like it's gonna be more than sufficient. We'll see how it handles through the winter, um, but it seems like the scheduling's working great. It actually does uh, at least seem to stay connected to our uh, Wi-Fi, which is really nice because then we can turn it on and off remotely. Um, it's connected long enough that we can make those quick adjustments and we'll see how it goes through the winter. If you have enjoyed this type of content and kind of a DIY and homesteading, just tasks around the barn, just uh, feel free to like and subscribe and follow us for more.